In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Christos Anisti. Christ is risen. I hope that we're all still in the season of the resurrection, and it's not that we have quickly, you know, forgotten the glory of this season in which the Lord has given us life and bestowed onto us the victory of his resurrection. Can I have the iPad real quick? As we look at the readings of the church today, they're really, really powerful. And as I was sort of looking at these readings last night and going through them over and over again, I felt like there was a very strong message starting from even the Vespers gospel last night. And the Vespers gospel last night, everything, by the way, in this season is from the book of John, but today in particular is all focused on John chapter 6. So we read most of John chapter 6 today, starting from Vespers last night, Matins this morning, and then the gospel reading this morning as well. But as I was reading the, the, the readings last night, I kept thinking to myself, and by the way, this should be the way that we approach church on Sunday. We should do the readings beforehand in order to prepare ourselves with a personal message from the Lord himself instead of coming and waiting Abuna to give you the message. Truly. So if every single one of us, before we come to church, we read the readings ourselves, you'll see how the Lord will speak to each and every one of us exactly what he wants us to hear according to our specific context. So when you read the Vespers reading from last night, there was a, they're on their first thing in John chapter six is Jesus feeds the multitudes. And as people depart, he departs also, and he gets into, his disciples get into a boat and they're going towards Capernaum. And it was dark and Jesus had not come to them. Then there arose a great sea uh, and a great wind blowing. So they rowed super hard for three or four miles. And then they saw Jesus walking on the sea and drawing near the boat, they were afraid. But he said to them, it is I, do not be afraid. Then they willingly received him into the boat. And immediately the boat was at the land where they were going. I don't know, verse 21 really stuck out to me last night from the Vespers gospel. They willingly received him into their boat. Why were they, willingly to, why were they willing to receive him into their boat? Because they rode and because the storm and because the difficulty of what they were doing, they said, we need somebody to come in and fix the situation. So as soon as they see the one who feeds the multitudes, the one who's able to heal the sick, cast out demons, they say, come, welcome. We want you into our boat. And I feel like sometimes this is our inclination towards God. Is when there is a difficult circumstance in our lives, we say, please, Lord, come into our boat. Please, Lord, come into our boat. But before that, what do we do? We're rowing and we're doing everything in our power and we're trying to fix our situation according to our own might. But then when we lose hope, then when we become afraid, then when the circumstances seem to be outside of our grip, that's when we run to him and ask him to enter into our boat and to fix our circumstances. Let's see how the readings sort of continue. So we go to this morning to the Matins Gospel. The Matins Gospel is also from what chapter? John chapter what? John chapter what? I wanna make sure you guys are awake. It says, when the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they also got into the boats and came to Capernaum seeking Jesus. The people came to seek Jesus, they wanted him. After he had just fed them, they immediately got, and they were like, we need to be with him. We need to find out where he is. But then look what happens. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them and said, this is one of the most sad parts of this chapter. Most assuredly, I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. (laughs) You seek me not because of me, not even because of the things I do, You seek me for what you want. You seek me for what you want. You seek me to do the things that you want me to do for you. And this actually cuts to the heart of the person who reads this gospel today. Because again, I'm rowing, I'm rowing, I'm rowing. I'm doing everything in my power. And then when bad circumstances come, we run to the Lord. And then when we run to him, he asks us this question. Do you seek me for me? Or do you seek me for what I can do for you? Do you seek me to be in relationship for me? Do you seek me to, do, to, to just be in my will and to know what my desire is for you? Or do you seek me to do something that will satisfy the things that you long for? 
And then he says to them, the, 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 the verse that we all know very well, do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give to you, because the God the Father has set his seal upon him. So you see the theme. Let's keep going. So now we go back to our liturgy readings. Let's go through the Pauline epistle. Check this out. It's so cool. Ephesians chapter 2. It tells us very clearly, St. Paul, and tells us in this epistle very, very clearly what is what makes us whole, what is what gives us our true identity, what is it that makes us be, be built on a solid foundation. He says, now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and the members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone and in whom the whole building being, fitting to get, being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. This to me, as I was reading it this morning, I felt that God was saying to you, to me personally and to every single one of us by his spirit, that don't seek me when you are running into a difficult circumstance. Don't seek, to me, as, seek me as a genie in a bottle. Don't come to me just for what I can do for you, but come to be part of the multitude of saints. Come to join the heavenly host. Come to be part of the work that God is doing because there's a foundation that's laid here. And the foundation that's laid here, nothing can shake it. The gates of hell cannot prevail against the church. And that's why this week, actually, it's very interesting. I've had many intensive conversations this week with people that have been challenging the church. And I, I kept asking them the question, what is the center of what you do in your churches or in your places of worship? They say, the word of God. I say, okay, the word of God. And what you read? They say, yeah, the word of God, the word of God, the word of God. I say, great, the word of God is great. But is there anything that your church gives you that seals you and that promises you your everlasting home? Is there anything in your church that gives you a covenant which God says, he who eats my flesh and drinks of my blood will live forever? Say, well, Abuna, that's symbolic. Say, no, 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 it's not symbolic. You read John chapter 6, he's very clear throughout the whole chapter that it's not something symbolic. You read in the Last Supper, he says, this is my body, which is broken for you and met for many. Do this in remembrance of me. This is not something that we do as a symbolic thing. This is the real presence of Christ. And that's why for all of us, when we enter into this church, the priest is not, except during the homily, the priest is not coming to give you a word for something that will make your life better. The priest is focused on him. Our backs are towards you. In Orthodox worship, everything is focused on him because we don't come for him to him to do signs for us. We don't come to church for the church to tell us a word for ourselves. We come to church because we need him, because he is the source of our healing, because he is the life, because he is the means of which when we go through a difficult circumstance, when he enters into our boat, the storm around us may still be going on, but there is a stillness amidst us that no matter what storm is going on around me, I know that he is in my boat. And when he is in my boat, when he dwells within me, it doesn't really matter what's going on around me. Let's keep going. Catholic epistle. Catholic epistle, 1 John chapter 5. Look at this. He says... These things I've written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Now this is the confidence. This is not the fear. This is not the anxiety. This is not the, the stress. This is not the difficulty of all the circumstances. This is the confidence that we have in him that we, if we ask anything according to his will, not my will, not what I want. Not you are my gene in the bottle and do my will, Lord. According to his will, he what? Hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. Let's go now to the gospel. Gospel reading of this morning is the continuation, and we know that Jesus very clearly uses the I am statement, one of the seven famous I am statements from the Gospel of St. John. And he says, I am the bread of life. He says, I am food. I am your food. I am the one who gives you your sustenance. I am the one that when you eat of me, you will never hunger. 
and if you believe in me, you will never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet you do not believe. These are the people that he's speaking to that just saw him feed the multitudes. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me, I will by no means cast out. Look at that beauty, the beauty of that. For I've come down from, my, from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. He says very clearly today, do not labor for the food that perishes. He says very clearly today, do not worry about the storm that is going on around you. When I enter into your boat, your situation, again, may not get better, but because I'm with you, you're better. He says very clearly, do not come and seek me for a sign. Come to seek me just to know me. And then he continues on throughout all the readings of this morning, telling us very clearly, that you are running to everything else to try to satisfy your deepest longing. You're running to every single thing else to try to quench your thirst. You're running to every single thing else beside him. And the problem is, is that when we go to those things very quickly, we realize that those things leave us hungry, they leave us thirsty, and they leave us longing for something more. The challenge for every single one of us this morning is to say, Lord, you are the bread of life, and you promise me that you are the bread of life by giving me a perpetual promise, a perpetual promise that every single time I eat of your flesh and I drink of your blood, you abide in me and I in you. That every single time you come to this Eucharistic table, you come to this meal, he says to you that whatever you are coming in with, Whatever your fears, whatever your anxieties, whatever your stresses, whatever your circumstances of brokenness that are going on around you, come to him, and what he does is he takes your brokenness and exchanges it with his life. He takes the difficulties that you're going through, and again, he may not, the circumstances around you may not change, but he changes you in the midst of those circumstances. He changes you by allowing you to know the peace that dwells in you in order for you to navigate all the difficulties and the circumstances that go on in life. See, the beautiful thing is from the beginning, from the beginning, it was God's greatest desire for, to have loving union with man. And when man fell, when man walked away from him, when man brought corruption into the world, God's absolute longing was to have loving union once again with his beloved creation. So what he does to us today is he gives us that loving union. He gives us that abiding, this oneness with him. That again, my circumstances may be challenging around me, but when he is with me, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Though I walk through the fire, I will not be burned. Though the crooked paths are going on around, around me, he makes my way straight. Though the rough patches are going down on the floor, he makes the path smooth. Again, but it's those who come to him, not for a sign, not for him to do something, not to rub a genie in a bottle, but to come to abide in him and he in you. So let us all today, all of us, with, with real sincerity of heart, say, Lord, I don't want my will to be done anymore. I'm tired of that. I've been doing my will for too long. I've been asking you to do my will and look where it's gotten me. It's brought me to different circumstances in my life that have caused me nothing but turmoil, nothing but trouble. Lord, I want your will above all things because I know in your will, you will lead me to the path of righteousness. I know it is your will to save me. I know it is your will to have loving union with me. I know it is your will for you to abide in me and I in you. So Lord, I respond to what your will is by saying, here I am, I surrender myself fully to you asking you to come and to abide in me. And what his response is, he says, come. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And whoever comes, behold, I will dine with him. And what? He with me. This is that dining table that he comes and opens up to you for you to abide in him. Glory be to God forever. Amen. Amen.